The blood cell count is the determination of the number of cells in the blood per unit volume. It can be done by automated methods such as cytometers, which are widely used in the healthcare environment, or by manual methods using the microscope with blood cell counting cameras or hemocytometers, which are widely used in research. The Neubayat chamber is a blood cell counting chamber that allows the microscope to determine the number of cells per unit volume of a liquid, which in the case of blood could be, for example, the number of erythrocytes per cubic millimeter. In it is a thick glass slide with a transverse and longitudinal grooves that divide the chamber into four zones. Two lateral zones, the cover slip is placed and two central zones where the blood sample is deposited and the cell count can be carried out thanks to the existence of a grid visible under the microscope. The height of the lateral zone of the chamber differs by 0.1 mm in height from the central zone, so that if we look at the chamber in profile, we will detect this difference in height. An important fact to take into account when calculating the number of cells, this is. The grid in the central area of the chamber allows us to count the number of cells. Seeing it under the microscope, this grid looks like a cross in which nine squares can be distinguished, the most important of which are the central square and the four lateral squares. The central square is where the erythrocytes or red blood cells are counted. It is a square of five squares by five squares, each divided into 16 small squares. The side squares will be used for the leukocyte or white blood count. Each of them is divided into 16 small squares. Once the blood sample is received in an anticoagulant tube, the first thing to do is to gently invert the tube to homogenize the sample. It should be borne in mind that the erythrocytes are very abundant in blood, so dilution of the sample will facilitate the counting. To do this, we use the DAISY reagent, an isotonic liquid that prevents cell lysis and contains formaldehyde as a cell fixative and sodium citrate as anticoagulant. In a clean tube, make a 1 to 1000 dilution by adding 995 microliters of DAISY reagent and 5 microliters of blood, mixing again gently to homogenize. After dilution and with the chamber clean, place a cover slip on the surface of the chamber. With a pipette, take 10 microliters of the diluted blood sample and deposit it little by little in the central area of the chamber, placing the tip of the pipette on the upper or lower side of the cover slip, and introducing the sample gently to prevent it from overflowing or producing bubbles. It is advisable to maintain a certain inclination between the pipette tip and the chamber to facilitate capillary entry of the sample. Once the sample has been deposited in the chamber, we can observe it under the microscope, starting with the 4 times magnification objective to locate and focus on the central grid and to check that the distribution of cells is homogeneous. After focusing the 40 times objective, is changed to be able to observe the cells at higher magnifications by only adjusting the micrometric focus. For a good cell count, it is recommended to count the cells contained in 80 small squares and calculate the mean. The criterion to be followed is to count the cells remaining inside each small square and those at the top and right margin. To calculate the number of red cells per cubic millimeter in our sample, the volume of each small square must be taken into account since they have a surface area of 0.0025 square millimeters, and we know that the height of the chamber is 0.1, the volume of each small square will be 0.00025 cubic millimeters, so we can already know how many red cells per cubic millimeter we have in our diluted sample. If we multiply this result by the dilution factor applied, 
we obtain the number of erythrocytes per cubic millimeter. We have then the value of the original sample. Normal values of red blood cells in humans are around 5 million per cubic millimeter of blood. The leukocyte count shall be performed in the same way as the erythrocyte count. In this case, Tarx reagent is used to dilute the sample. This is a hypotonic liquid containing gentian violet to lightly stain the white blood cells and glacial acid to lyse the erythrocytes. This number of leukocytes in the blood is lower than the number of erythrocytes, so the dilution we use will be lower. In this case, we will make a 1 to 20 dilution by adding 950 microliters of torque reagent and 50 microliters of blood. Once the sample has been deposited in the central area of the chamber, the leukocyte count shall be carried out in the four lateral squares. For a good cell count, the four squares shall be counted in their totality following the same criteria as for the erythrocyte count and their mean shall be calculated. Each lateral square has a surface area of 1 square millimeter, so its volume will be 0.1 cubic millimeter. Thus, we can apply the same formula to calculate the number of leukocytes per cubic millimeter in the diluted sample, which multiplied by its dilution factor will give us the number of leukocytes in the original sample. Normal values of leukocytes in humans are between 5,000 and 11,000 leukocytes per cubic millimeter of blood. Thank you.